Ladies and gentlemen, we are starting immediately. Please take a seat. Thank you. 女士们、先生们，大会马上开始，请您立刻就座，谢谢。请您立刻就座，谢谢Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome His Excellency Premier Li Keqiang of the People's Republic of China, His Excellency Prime Minister of the Kyrgyz Republic, His Excellency Prime Minister of the Republic of Korea, His Excellency Deputy Prime Minister of the Republic of Turkey, and Professor Klaus Schwab, Founder and Executive Chairman of the World Economic Forum. Your Excellency Li Keqiang, Premier of the People's Republic of China, distinguished heads of government, dear members, partners, and guests of the World Economic Forum, it is my great pleasure to welcome you all to this, the 10th annual meeting of new champions. Over the past 10 years, this annual meeting of new champions has evolved into the foremost global gathering on science technology, innovation, and entrepreneurship. This is the meeting of pioneers and experts who will shape the future and lead the fourth industrial revolution. Other than China, I can't think of another country that would be a better backdrop for these discussions to take place, because China is undergoing an economic transformation, the speed and magnitude of which has never before been seen on this planet. From gene editing to space exploration, from patent filings to research papers, from a vibrant social network app used by more than 700 million global users to the 24-hour record online sales of 14 billion US dollars on Singles Day last year, Chinese entrepreneurs, scientists, and consumers are redefining the global innovation and economic landscapes. But the path forward has not yet been mapped. We are entering an undiscovered age with as many risks as opportunities. Over the coming days and beyond this annual meeting of new champions, we look to our new champions gathered here to understand and positively shape the fourth industrial revolution and its transformational impact. And now, dear guests, let us welcome our host, Mr. Huang Xingguo, Acting Party Secretary and Mayor of Tianjin. Your Excellency Distinguished Premier Li Keqiang, Distinguished Chairman Schwab, Distinguished Friends and Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Good morning. In this beautiful season with the exuberant green landscape, 2016 Summer Davos Forum has opened ceremoniously today. The world attention once again focuses on the city of Tianjin. On behalf of CPC Tianjin Municipal Committee, the municipal government, and 15 million people of the city, I would like to express my warm congratulations on the opening of the forum and extend my sincere welcome to all the honorable friends from China and the rest of the world. There is an old saying in China which says, it takes a decade to make a fine sword. The first Summer Davos Forum was held in China 10 years ago. Now the forum has grown strong and tall. It has offered 
an important platform for the global new champions to make exploration for innovation and plan for the future. The forum has also helped the has also helped tying a beautiful Chinese knot for top world talents in sharing wisdom and ideas. Along with the development of the forum, the city of Tianjin is advancing with great strides forward in the world. Hereby, please allow me to express my sincere gratitude to Professor Schwab, the WF Foundation, the ministries, provinces and uh, municipalities, and uh, all the honorable friends. Sincere thanks to you all. At present, the world economy is still in the period of profound readjustment after the international financial crisis. Although the full economic recovery is beset with arduous tasks and multifarious and complex situations, the fourth industrial revolution bears a strong momentum and have a sweeping impact. The new round of industrial revolution characterized by cutting edge technology of big data, cloud computing, artificial intelligence, and quantum communication with intelligent technology and information technology at its core will completely change the traditional way of life and production and reshape the economic landscape in the future. The forum has the theme, the fourth industrial revolution and the power of transformation dedicated to the in-depth discussion of new path and new driving force of the transformation. This theme coincides with the Chinese economic development strategy in the period of economic transformation upgrading and conforms to the trend of the times at its great and special significance. It is both our hard-won common opportunity and a shared responsibility to conform to the historical trend and promote the transformation of the global economy. Where does the power of transformation come from? Firstly, it comes from innovation and exploration. It is important to constantly promote the all-round innovation with scientific and technological innovation as the core. It is also important to drive new business model upgrade by new breakthroughs in industrial technology. Competitive advantages will be reshaped and the initiative in economic transformation will be won. Secondly, the power of transformation comes from governance optimization. It's important to adhere to the principle of equality, mutual trust, inclusiveness, and mutual learning in the establishment of a fair, equitable, rational and ordered international governance structure so that more countries can benefit from industrial revolution. Thirdly, the power of transformation comes from the openness and cooperation. One strand of silk does not make a thread. One tree does not make a forest. Development through transformation is a long and arduous task which calls for further deepening of tangible global cooperation, elimination of trade and investment barriers, promotion of free flow and optimal allocation of resources, and expansion of win-win space for economic growth. Tianjin is the cradle of China's modern industry. In China's new round of economic development, the city is playing the role of new champion with vitality of innovation and development. In recent years, led by the concept of innovative, coordinated, green, open and shared development advocated by President Xi Jinping, we stick to the scientific and technological innovation in driving economic in transformation and a structural readjustment promoting industrial upgrading and the quality and efficiency of economic development has improved steadily. For the past five years, the Tianjin's GDP average annual growth rate has been 12.4% and the fiscal revenue increased by 20.1% each year. At present, according to the definition of Tianjin given by the central government and the, what we are speeding up, the construction of the National Advanced Manufacturing Research and Development Base, 
International Shipping Hub in North China, Financial Innovation and Operation Demonstration Area, and a pilot zone for reform and opening up. We are forging ahead towards the goal of building a moderately, moderately prosperous society in an all-round way. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the times call for the power of transformation. The world is looking forward to the era of transformation. Let's join hands, keep pace with the times, seize the opportunity for transformation, gather the wisdom of innovation, and jointly create a bright future for the world economy. Finally, I wish this forum a complete success, and I wish all the honorable friends a pleasant stay in Tianjin and uh, fruitful and uh, fruitful results in your work. Thank you all. The highlight video for the 10th anniversary of the annual meeting of the new champions. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum, Professor Klaus Schwab. Your Excellency Li Keqiang, Premier of the People's Republic of China, distinguished heads of government, members of government, dear partners and guests of the World Economic Forum, dear friends, a warm welcome to all of you to the 10th annual meeting of the new champions and the fifth meeting here in Tianjin. And first, Acting Party Secretary and Mayor, I would like, on behalf of all of us, our, to express our great gratitude for the hospitality in this great, beautiful, fast-driving city. We have a record participation. Over 2,000 political, business, and other leaders of society from over 80 countries. Premier Lee, this participation is a clear demonstration of confidence in China's leadership's ability to master the challenges created by the new normal of lower global economic growth, but also in a world of heightened turbulence and uncertainty as we just have experienced last week. The annual meeting is convening under the theme 
the fourth industrial revolution and its transformational impact. Corresponding to the theme, I am proud to see you and to welcome you here. The true pioneers, the new champions of this revolution, the most forward-thinking scientists and entrepreneurs, you will shape the transformation of the world into a new era of unprecedented technological opportunities. China, with its 13th five-year plan, particularly with its supply-side reforms, is clearly paving the way into this new industrial age, whereby innovation and talent will be the main economic driving forces. As you said in your opening speech last year, Mr. Premier, and I quote, creativity of the people is the greatest asset for development. Premier Lee, I'm also proud to say that this summit reflects truly the fundamental forces of the fourth industrial revolution. It uses and integrates the most advanced technology and interaction tools to ensure ultimately that we all work together to meet the transformation challenges, not only in this country, but worldwide. And that we master the transition from the old to the new, often called creative destruction or, distra or destructive creation. Global collaborative efforts and initiatives which bring together, like here, all relevant decision makers have never been in greater need. The world is even more interconnected driven by technology and innovation. But we need to develop regulatory principles and agile frameworks to ensure the best and coordinated use of technology so that all global citizens can thrive in this new era. The forum will continue to shape the systems for the future, connecting the dots, and providing a comprehensive platform for catalyzing and integrating all the needed efforts, nationally and internationally. But all of those efforts must be based not only on innovation, but also on coordination, green development, opening up, and I emphasize particularly sharing. Your Excellency, our presence here would not have been possible without the partnership which we have built with the People's Republic of China over the past 37 years. Thank you, particularly joining us again, and thank you, Premier Li, for this unwavering support. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome His Excellency Li Keqiang, the Premier of the People's Republic of China. Professor Klaus Schwab, distinguished heads of government, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, friends, it's a great pleasure to meet you again in Tianjin. At the outset, I wish to congratulate 
On behalf of the Chinese government, the opening of this annual meeting of the new champions and extend a sincere welcome to all our guests and friends from the press. This is the 10th annual meeting of the new champions, or Summer Davos, in China. We have a saying in China, it takes 10 years to grow a tree. If we compare the Summer Davos to a tree, then after 10 years of careful nurturing, especially with the efforts of all of you present, this tree has borne rich foliage and bountiful fruits. Showcasing to the world the process and achievements of China's reform, opening up and modernization, and contributing wisdom and strength to the common development and prosperity of China and the world. It has also provided an important platform for our joint efforts. When the international financial crisis broke out eight years ago, um, countries have resorted to various tools to overcome the crisis. However, eight years on, recovery has fallen far short of people's expectations. Global trade and investment is lackluster. Commodities and financial markets experience volatility from time to time. Growth prospects of developed countries and emerging economies are diverging, and there's growing geopolitical risks and uncertainties. A few days ago, the Britons voted out of the European Union in a referendum. Its impact is already demonstrating on the international financial market, and it is adding new uncertainties to the world economy. Under such circumstances, to promote world economic recovery and the economic growth of all countries, we need to jointly tackle challenges, strengthen our confidence, and create a stable international environment, find solutions to address the root causes together. I want to make it clear that uh, Europe is an important partner for China, and China will continue to be committed to maintaining and growing China-EU relations and China-UK relations. We hope to see a united and stable European Union. Uh, we also hope to see a stable and prosperous UK. Against the background of uh, globalization, it is impossible for us to talk about our own development with no regard for the international economic environment. Uh, therefore, we need to work together to make progress through joint efforts. The theme of this year's session, the, industri the fourth industrial revolution and its transformation transformational impact, has offered people a new perspective to seek economic transformation. Therefore, it is a relevant, highly relevant uh, theme for discussion. And here, I want to share with you a few thoughts in this connection. First, to promote stable recovery of the world economy, we need to actively carry out structural reform. To address the deep-seated problems in the world economy, we need to both strengthen demand management and concentrate our efforts on structural reform in order to eliminate, eliminate the root causes. Although countries vary in their national circumstances, they should all move in the same direction of addressing economic imbalance with a focus on advancing fiscal and financial reform, easing uh, re re restrictions, promoting competition, supporting innovation, expanding, opening up, and work together 
to promote strong, sustainable, and balanced world economic growth. Second, to promote stable recovery of the world economy, it is imperative to speed up economic transformation and upgrading. For the world economy to walk out of the woods, the ultimate solution lies in uh, transforming growth pattern and replacing old drivers with new drivers. To promote economic transformation, we need to sees the opportunity provided by the new round of industrial revolution and scientific and technological revolution to give boost to the growth of new economy and the upgrading of traditional industries. The various parties need to adapt to the prevailing trend and focus their policies on supporting economic trans transformation and upgrading and giving stronger momentum to economic growth. Third, to promote world economic uh, recovery, we need efficient and orderly global governance. In the face of common challenges, only by strengthening unity, uh, we'll be able to help all to succeed. And this is the only right way forward. Countries must adopt more growth-friendly policies, strengthen micro-policy coordination, steadfastly advance trade and investment liberalization and facilitation, and endeavor to build a fairer, more just, and open international economic system. For the world major economies, while formulating macroeconomic policies, they should not only consider their own growth, but also the spillovers of these policies, because we all live in the same global village. Ladies and gentlemen, having experienced years of rapid growth, the Chinese economy has entered a new normal. And this is also a topic of keen interest to all of you. In the face of mounting economic downward pressure, we did not resort to indiscriminate strong stimulus. Instead, we have innovated the means of macro control, advanced structural reform, and focus our efforts on cultivating new drivers and upgrading traditional drivers. And over the past few years, we have maintained a stable economic growth, and we continue to lead the world's major economies in growth speed. And more importantly, we have made positive progress in structural adjustment. The journey we have traveled over these past few years is filled with risks and challenges. Yet it is encouraging that uh, the new drivers are growing rapidly. Although they cannot yet compare with traditional drivers in size, they do play a bigger role now in securing employment, increasing people's income, promoting transformation and upgrading, and also supporting development. Given time, the rising new drivers will open up new prospects for the Chinese economy. Like the theme of uh, this year's annual meeting, we are embracing a new round of industrial revolution. This year, despite the continued slowdown of world economic growth, the Chinese economy has maintained overall stability and made a steady progress. And it has been kept well within the appropriate range. This is indeed not easy. China's GDP expanded by 6.7% in the first quarter and continued stable growth in the second quarter. Summer grain production is expected to be a harvest again Corporate profits in the industrial sector are steadily rising. The service industry is rapidly growing, and market sales are steadily expanding. CPI is basically stable. Drop in PPI has been narrowed. Energy intensity and the pollution and the emission of major pollutants continue to drop. In particular, employment has been kept stable. In the first five months of this year, in the urban sector alone, 
5.77 million new jobs were created, completing 58% of the annual target. And the surveyed unemployment rate in 31 major cities in May was 5.02%. And the unemployment rate has been kept at this level for the past few years. And also, in the first half of this year, the stable growth of the Chinese economy is very much attributed to the role of uh, innovation, reform, adjustment, and transformation. We have uh, made great efforts to promote mass innovation and entrepreneurship. Every day, about 40,000 new market entities are created, including over 13,000 new enterprises. In the first five months of this year, the growth speed in the creation of new market entities has been higher than the previous two years. At the same time, the leading role of consumption is strengthening, and uh, the service industry is becoming the largest industry in the economy. New forms of consumption, such as information communication, smartphones, and new energy vehicles are booming. The five um, happiness industries, namely tourism, culture, sports, education, and uh, health and old age care, are rapidly growing. And they have uh, promoted the upgrading of consumption. And also, new technologies, new business forms, and a new economy are flourishing in China. High-end manufacturing, e-commerce, and other sectors that are going through transformation and upgrading are also advancing by leaps and bounds. Enterprises, industries, and regions that have started transformation earlier and developed new industries faster have maintained a sound momentum of growth. So on the whole, the Chinese economy now has improved structure, enhanced quality, and a growing momentum. On the other hand, we're also aware that uh, because of the complex and uh, severe international environment and the deep-seated uh, problems that have accumulated, over the years in the domestic, uh, domestic economy. The foundation of the stable operation of the Chinese economy is not yet firmly established. The impact of external demand in driving growth is waning. A private investment and a manufacturing investment are sluggish, and there are still potential risks in finance and other sectors. In those industries with serious overcapacity and regions with unit unitary economic structure, there are still quite a number of difficulties, and the downward pressure on the economy is still uh, mounting, and the difficulties cannot be over underestimated. The fact that we have faced up to these difficulties and uh, admitted these difficulties shows that we have the confidence, determination, and the capability to prevail over the difficulties. There is more hope than difficulty in the Chinese economy. The fundamentals of the Chinese economy have remained unchanged, and our macro policy will maintain its continuity and stability. And we will continue to innovate the model of macro control, implement uh, the proactive fiscal policy with greater intensity and efficiency, carry out the prudent monetary policy in a flexible and appropriate fashion, and channel more resources into areas that can help strengthen the weak links, increase momentum, and take development to a new level, and also to areas that can help promote economic transformation and upgrading. At present, the debt ratio of the Chinese government is about 40%, while the debt ratio of the central government is only about 16%, which is fairly low among the world's major economies. Well, this gives us space in carrying out a proactive fiscal policy. We have high domestic savings rate, which means the potential for the development of multi-tiered capital market, 
and latitude in improving financial regulation and, allocate, and uh, optimizing the allocating of financial resources. We can create conditions and use market tools to gradually bring down corporate leverage ratio and financing costs. We do not only have ample policy tools to keep the economy within an appropriate range, but also the capability to fend off systemic and regional risk, risks. In this transitional stage, short-term fluctuations of China's economic growth are hardly avoidable. And there might be changes in the various uh, traditional economic indicators. But we should also uh, see and understand that some of the changes uh, brought out by the development of the new economy are not yet fully uh, visible. We need to promote economic transformation through structural reform and keep the economy within the appropriate range. So the Chinese economy will not head for a hard landing, and we are fully capable of uh, meeting all the primary uh, targets of economic and social development for this year. The Chinese economy has huge potential, strong advantage, and a broad space, and the prospect of the economy is bright. We are the largest developing country in the world, and we have over 900 million workforce, including over 170 million who have received higher education or training of professional skills. We are also the largest manufacturing country in the world, a major trading nation of goods and services, and also a ma major destination and a source of foreign investment. China is also the second largest consumer market in the world, and China's middle income population is in hundreds of millions, and it is still steadily expanding. And the rural poor population is declining year by year. Um, the number of permanent, permanently registered urban population is increasing by tens of millions every year. China is an emerging market with huge growth potential. And it is also a big stage where the talent of people can be fully explored. We welcome investors from both home and abroad to seize the opportunity provided by the Chinese market and develop their business in China. We are and will always be optimistic about the Chinese economy. Optimism is a sign of confidence. In a market economy, confidence can guide expectation. So in it, confidence in itself is a strong strength and power. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chinese economy is at an important stage of growth driver transition and economic transformation. We will focus on development as the top priority, pursue innovative, coordinated, green, open and shared development as identified in the 13th five-year plan. While expanding aggregate demand, we will steadfastly advance supply-side structural reform, cut over capacity, destock, deleverage, lower the costs and strengthen the weak links so that development can be less reliant on natural resources and be more driven by human resources and innovation, thus enabling the Chinese economy to maintain medium-high growth rate and achieve medium-high development. We will guide economic transformation and upgrading through innovation. Innovation is the primary driving force of development. We need to implement the strategy of innovation-driven development, build an innovation-driven country. We need to fully harness the vision of innovation. This requires us to develop the new economy and cultivate new growth drivers. We need to vigorously promote mass entrepreneurship and innovation, further advance the Internet Plus initiative, extensively apply 
the Internet of Things, Big Data, Cloud Computing, and uh, other information technology of the new generation, promote integrated development of different areas, and give rise to more new industries, new business forms, and business models. We need to roll out new products and new services that better meet the needs of the market and build platforms for mass participation, cloud sourcing, cloud support, and cloud funding to pull strengths to accelerate innovation and foster new areas of economic growth. Yesterday, I visited a company in Tianjin with only 270 staff. But he established a cloud computing platform About 200,000 software developers were registered in this platform, and through this platform, these developers or programmers can provide their new designs. And this company itself, through this platform, can seek solutions from these programmers. They have a very equitable distribution model. When we talk about developing new growth drivers, it doesn't mean that we no longer need transformation and upgrading of traditional industries. In fact, the new economy is also transforming traditional industries. The company I just mentioned actually serves 40,000 companies. Most of them are in traditional industries. More than 15% of those enterprises are big companies. And this tech firm mainly provide smart upgrading of the equipments of those companies and provide software solutions to these companies so that the company's manufacturing can be smarter and more customized and can better meet the needs of the market. There are so many such companies of this kind emerging in China. And it shows that traditional growth drivers are being transformed into new growth drivers. And they are giving rise to new forms of business. We advocate the vision of innovation, and uh, it also refers to a spirit of sharing. Sharing is also, sharing economy is also one that encourages mass participation. The spread of economic globalization and the internet has provided broad space for people to start up business and innovate. Well, through mass innovation and uh, entrepreneurship, combine the innovative activities of the elites and grassroots, the offline and online, the enterprises and the research institutes, so as to combine the individual actions of numerous market players into synergy. When we combine these forces, we will create great synergy. This can help promote cooperation and sharing of IND, professional knowledge, and uh, professional skills. Sharing economy is a economy that everyone can participate in and benefit from. It can help contribute to reasonable income distribution and provide a chance for everyone, a fighting chance for everyone to achieve their dreams. It will also allow everyone to live up to their fullest potential. And it could also help enhance social equity. We will comprehensively deepen reform to promote economic transformation and upgrading. Trans ref reform remains the um, source of strength for our development. Supply-side structural reform is a priority for us. The Chinese economy faces some structural problems, both on the supply and demand side, but mainly on the supply side. We need to re use reform 
to advance structural adjustments, reduce inefficient and low-end supply, and expand efficient and medium-high-end supply. This could help transform our economy and also promote economic growth. An important aspect is to phase out outdated production capacities. What is important is to cut overcapacity in steel, coal, and other difficult industries. We need to adopt a market-based and rules-based approach, apply strict standards in environment protection, quality and safety. And the biggest challenge is how to address possible layoffs. The enterprises need to take multiple measures to ensure that their employees can be re-employed. And the central and local governments need to provide support in taking care of the staffs. Overcapacity is a global issue. We will take initiative to cut overcapacity, and this is what a responsible country would do. We will further streamline administration, delegate power, strengthen regulation, and improve services, build a level playing field, delegate government powers wherever possible, and give more freedom to the market and also strengthen regulation during and after the handling of the matters. We also need to explore exp inclusive and effective prudential regulation, um, support and guide the healthy development of new business models. For those that find themselves in trouble but are moving in the right direction, we need to give them timely guidance, remove the risks but we can't stop eating for fear of choking. We need to give them reasonable space for development. For those involved in IPI infringement, fraud, in the name of innovation, we will punish them strictly according to law. We will also open the platform for government public services and promote sharing of government information to make things easier for the people and enterprises and enhance the efficiency of government services. We'll also make great efforts to cut taxes and lower the burden for the companies uh, so that the financial sector can better serve the real economy. We will further st streamline the state-owned enterprises and uh, give more market access to the private sector. And we'll also promote economic transformation and upgrading through opening up. No matter how developed China becomes in the future, we must have mutual learning with the rest of the world and we'll open wider to the outside world. We'll further enhance our open economy, open wider our services industry and manufacturing industry, provide more investment opportunities for foreign businesses and uh, build a more fair, transparent and predictable investment environment. All companies registered in China, be it Chinese or foreign funded, joint venture or independently owned, we will treat them all as equals. In the face of the complexities and the fluctuations in the international financial markets, we'll stay committed to a managed floating exchange rate regime based on market supply and demand with reference to a basket of currencies. The fundamentals of the Chinese economy determine that there is no basis for persistent devaluation of the IMB. We have the capacity to keep the IMB stable at an adaptive and equilibrium level. China will stay committed to peaceful development and a win-win strategy of opening up. We stand ready to work with all countries to promote inclusive and balanced growth and green and sustainable development. Ladies and gentlemen, Tianjin is a major port in China. It is also a major port that can participate in international competition. It is a starting point of a voyage to the vast oceans. For a giant ship to sail far, sustained and strong momentum is required. We stand ready to work with the rest of the world to seize the opportunities of the new round of technological and industrial revolution, seek new drivers of growth, build new engines of economic growth, and promote steady recovery of the world economy 
in transformation and upgrading so as to usher in a better future for the development of human society. I wish the meeting a full success. Thank you. Li Keshang, thank you for sharing with us such a comprehensive integrated vision of China's economy. We should not underestimate the challenge related to leading such a large economy with such an impact on the world to lead such an economy when we are faced with headwinds. But um, Graciously, you have agreed to answer um, one or two questions. Um, Premier, you described the you described the structural and um, uh, reforms and the uh, economic adjustment. And I think it's uh, remarkable to achieve 6.7 growth in the first quarter, and you also shared with us that this growth rate is quite uh, stable. Um, but there are still very substantial downward pressures. Now, my question would be, um, are there any measures which the Chinese government will take Are there any measures which the Chinese government will take to secure Premier Li, are there any special measures uh, the Chinese government will take to secure healthy and sustainable economic development in view of those continued downside pressures? And I should add we have um, consecutive translation, so um, you don't have to use your earphones. Li Zongli, first, I very much thank you for your comprehensive and detailed analysis of your view on the economic situation of China. I think we should not underestimate the leadership of a global economy, particularly when it is facing such a big challenge in the world economy. 毫无疑问，在领导这样一个经济体发展的过程中，是会遇到逆风的。按照惯例，我很荣幸能够代表在座的参会嘉宾向您提一到两个问题。您在演讲中谈到了中国正在推行的结构改革和要实现的经济结构调整。我也认为，在今年一季度，中国经济实现百分之六点七的增长是一个了不起的成就。而且，您也谈到了中国经济继续保持了。稳健发展的势头，同时我们也看到中国经济依然面临巨大的下行压力。在面临这样巨大下行压力的时候，中国政府将会采取什么特别的措施来确保中国经济保持健康和平稳的发展？ Uh, 我首先想说明的是，中国经济。今年一季度保持六点七的增长速度，进入二季度以来，仍然是以稳定的态势在向前增长。这本身就不容易，因为它是一个已经有十万亿。美元基础上的一个经济体的增长，今年的六点七比若干年前的两位数增长的绝对量还要大，这是。稍加计算就可以推出出推推出的，而且我们的增长又是在世界经济
复苏乏力的情况下，到目前为止，我们的出口总的来讲是负增长。我们是靠自己的内生动力在拉动着增长，是靠内需市场在提供着空间。我们又是在克服长期积累的一些矛盾当中推动增长，所以说这个增长如果继续保持在这个合理的区间，这就是我们所希望达到的目标。In the first quarter of this year, China's economy grew at 2%, and entering Q2, we have secured a steady momentum of economic performance, and neither... additional amount than a double-digit growth that we achieved several years ago. In particular, we are achieving such a growth at a time when global economic recovery is sluggish. And I can also tell you that uh, in the past weeks and months, China's exports have been in the uh, growth of Chinese exports has been in the negative territory, and we have mainly relied on our internal domestic drivers of growth to secure such a development, we have mainly relied on China's domestic demand and domestic market. In the meantime, we are also taking hard steps to overcome those long uh, entrenched problems in China's economic development. So I believe it's fair to say that if we can keep China's economy growing within its proper range, that is already what we can, uh, what we hope um, best would happen to this economy. Second, China economy has already had such a high base. If it wants to achieve high growth, it must not only in the natural environment and environment be subject to restrictions, but also be unsustainable. 我们能够保持中高速增长，已经是可以满足国内比较充分的就业和人民收入的不断增加，以及环境有所改善。从这几年我们采取的政策看，我们继续实施积极的财政政策和。稳健的货币政策，不搞大水漫灌式的强刺激，而是稳中求进，着力推进结构性改革。现在看，保持中国经济高中高速增长，我们的政策取向是可以做到的，所以。仍然要保持稳定。Well, second, the size of uh, Chinese economy has become so big. So if we only blindly pursue a high-speed growth, it will only add further burdens to our resources and to the environment. Such a kind of growth is not sustainable. At the same time, a medium-high growth speed is now already good enough for us in terms of adding jobs, increasing people's income, and making improvements to our environment. As you all know that in recent years, the Chinese government has adhered to pursuing a proactive fiscal policy and a prudent monetary policy. We did not resort to massive stimulus measures. Instead, we have focused our attention on pursuing structural reforms, and I believe our policies have paid off and helped us secure a steady momentum of China's economy. Third, 
我们并不忽视世界经济的变量，以及中国经济存在的风险隐患和突出矛盾，所以我们仍然有比较充分的应对挑战的，我们仍然保留了比较充分的应对挑战的政策工具。正像我刚才在演讲时所说到的，中国中央政府的债务率还比较低，我们实施积极的财政政策仍然可以加力，中国的储蓄率比较高，我们推进金融改革，盘活存量资金。顺畅金融对实体经济的传导机制，也有空间。所以，中国政策的工具箱有应对更大挑战的准备和可能。我想强调的是，我们。在经济短期波动出现的时候，希望市场平静看待，因为中国经济全年看、长期看，一定会在我们预期的目标里实现稳定增长、实现稳增长和调结构的平衡，是通过推进供。结构性改革，尤其是供给侧结构性改革，使可持续性不断增加。谢谢。Well, thirdly, we will not underestimate the so-called variables in global economic landscape, and we will not underestimate the potential risks and、uh, the challenges existing in China's own economy that we need to cope with. We have a good reserve of policy instruments to help us meet all these various challenges. And、uh, as I said in my special address, the central government debt ratio in China is、uh, pretty low, and there is hence ample room for the central government to do even more in terms of、uh, pursuing a fiscal, a proact proactive fiscal policy. And、uh, we have a high savings rate in China. That means there is still much we can do in advancing financial reform, and、uh, um, in ensuring that the financial services will better serve the needs of the real economy. We can do so by ensuring that there can be better functioning of the trans transition mechanism of financial services for the real economy. So all these mean that we are well prepared. In terms of using all necessary policy instruments at our disposal to meet these challenges, I also want to say to the market that in the face of some short-term fluctuations in China's economic performance, I hope that the market will view these fluctuations with calm and a cool head, because viewing the whole year and taking a long-term perspective, we believe. That China's economy is on track to continue to achieve steady growth, and we will be able to strike a proper balance between securing growth and making structural adjustment by pursuing structural reforms, especially the supply-side structural reforms, to ensure there will be long-term sustainable development of this economy. Thank you. 最后，我想加一句，希望在场的各位企业家，你们啊。成为，你们都能成为中国经济长期的投资者，而不是短期的投机者。啊、呃，当然，我们并不啊、呃、一概的排斥，但是我们政府将管好、管理好，看中国政府看好。管好中国的长经济的长期预预期，也
，希望各位作为助力者、推动者，短期有问题，我们也会用微调的办法解决。我刚才就在不断的试这个麦克风，它的效果也是看我们在短期、在具体细节上。是不是能够做到投资者满意？嗯。Well, just to add one point,、uh, I hope all the business represented here will be long-term investors in instead of short-term speculators of China's economic development. And as for the Chinese government, it will continue to do its best to provide the market with、uh, a good,、uh, optimistic expectation for the long-term growth prospects of China's economy, and I hope that there will also be positive inputs from each and every one of you. And in response to some short-term、uh, issues or、uh, um, problems, the government will do some fine-tuning to adjust. To the short-term needs, just as I was fine-tuning my earplug to test the sound in my ear. Well, in a word, I hope that you will continue to have strong faith in China's economy. Mr. Premier, maybe we see industrial、uh, revolution in five to ten years. We will have implanted microphones. Um, would, would you allow me another question?、Uh, we spoke a lot about,、um, and you mentioned the importance of the fourth industrial revolution for the future of China's economy. Now, what policies、uh, will the Chinese government introduce to fully leverage the potential of this fourth industrial revolution? 呃，谈到第四次工业革命，也可能过大概五到十年，我们就可以有植入式的麦克风或者是耳机来实现我们的交流。刚才您也多次提到了，嗯，对于中国经济未来发展第四次工业革命的重要性。所以我想问的问题呢，就是中国政府将采取什么政策措施来充分的利用和发挥第四次工业革命的潜力？呃，我刚才在演讲当中已经讲到，要破解世界经济复苏乏力的难题，还需要寻找治本之策。很重要的，就是要推动结构性改革，而新一轮技术革命，不论以什么称呼。他正在，不仅是悄悄的兴，悄悄的产生，而且在蓬勃的发展，这是不可忽视的力量。我在昨天晚上和施瓦布先生等参加会议的有关人员会谈的时候，大家普遍认为，当你到传统的产业。传统产业占主导地位的地方去看，可能有压抑，甚至沮丧。但是到那些新的产业，运用新的工业革命，发展的迅猛的地方去看，企业去看。新经济所带来的，不仅是曙光，而且是照耀这个土地的光芒。In my special address, I already mentioned that to tackle the problem of a sluggish global economic recovery, we must address this issue at its very root. Hence, we believe it is imperative for us to advance structural. Reforms, and、uh, in this new round of scientific and technological revolution, however one may call it, this revolution is not just quietly taking shape, coming into being. It is gathering momentum in a very fast way, and this is a force that no that everyone needs to reckon with.、Um, 
Yesterday evening, I had uh, a meeting with uh, Professor Schwab and uh, a number of uh, participating delegates. It seems that we all share such an impression. That is, if you go to a place that is dominated with the traditional industries, you may find the situation quite discouraging or disheartening. But if you go to a place or a company with a large number of new industries enabled by new technologies, you can feel the, not just a glimmer of hope that this new economy is giving each and every one. This new economy is actually casting its uh, light and glow all over the horizon. Chang 尽可能的发挥出来，因为在我们的现实社会当中，即便是某些天生智力受到障碍的人，他在音乐方面甚至都可以表现出天才。我们要。Mankind have the wisdom of embracing and leveraging such new hope. In the course of the fourth industrial revolution, the Chinese government has put highest premium on making innovations, not just technolo technological innovations, but also institutional innovation. We also need to ensure that human beings will be able to put their potential and talent to best use, and we also need to be tolerant of any possible failure or mistake in the course of making innovations. We believe that innovation will be the tremendous force driving us um, forward. And we believe in bringing out the potential of each and everyone. That is why the Chinese government has encouraged mass entrepreneurship and innovation. We believe that we have seen such examples in our real world, that even for an intellectually challenged person, he or she may demonstrate genius-like talent in, say, uh, composing music or in other areas. So we must have faith in the creativity of each individual. Yeah,就是我们要实施支持创新发展新产业的财税政策。中央政府已经出台了一系列税收优惠 金融支持的政策，昨天我在天津市听他们汇报，他们对小微企业的创新，甚至不光给金融担保，而且给风险补偿，就是为了让金融机构、让创投基金、天使基金能够发挥支持新产业。Second, the government will continue to introduce fiscal and tax incentives to support the development of new industries and new economy. The central government has already adopted such steps and provided financial support. Yesterday, I was briefed by the Tianjin local officials about what steps Tianjin has taken to boost innovation of micro and small businesses. The government is not just providing financial guarantee, but also making risk compensation so that venture capital and angel capital will be able to do their best in supporting the development of new industries and upgrading of traditional industries. 
差别化的产业政策，来支持新一轮的科技革命。我们对那些传统的行业，啊，要推动改造，要运用环保、质量等标准，淘汰过剩的产能。同时，我们要给新产业的发展制定鼓励的政策，给他们，给新业态的发展提供。合理的发展空间。Third, we will take a differentiated approach in terms of our industrial policies. We will introduce steps to boost the transformation and upgrading of traditional industries. We will also enforce stricter environmental and product quality standards to phase out excess industrial capacity. We will also adopt supportive policy measures to boost the growth of new industries and create a reasonably enabling environment for their growth. 最后，我想强调，在座的不论是企业家还是研究人员，我们下一次见面的时候，你们不论是在改造的传统产业，还是在发展的新经济。都是新的领军人物，谢谢。Well, last, last but not the least, I want to tell all the business representatives or researchers, scientists present at our meeting today that when next time we meet again, whether you are engaged in transforming a traditional industry or developing a new one, you are all the new champions. Thank. Thank you, Premier Li. I know how much your speech was expected. And you, you mentioned in your speech how optimism is important, but optimism is also based on trust. And I think uh, your comprehensive description of Chinese uh, economic policies give us trust into the continuation of um, fast, on a medium level, uh, and sustained growth. And we leave here this uh, room certainly uh, with the conviction that uh, particularly in today's economic uh, situation, China will continue to be a very positive force for the world. Thank you for sharing so generously your time with us. Uh, we are grateful, and I know um, we um, we went over time. Yeah, but, it's time uh, to have lunch. but thank <laughs> thank you very much for being with us again. And uh, I want, on behalf of all the participants, um, express our gratitude.